So I've got an example here for us to look at. Uh, we want to find the volume of the solid bounded by the x-axis and the graph of this quadratic function here. And we're going to rotate it around the line x equals 1. So we're going to rotate around something other than the y-axis here. So how are we going to do that? Well, first, I, I've got a diagram here, and, and I've labeled uh, the two vertical lines just to make, make it clear which is which, right? One is the, the y-axis. That's x equals 0. We're going to rotate around x equals 1. So when we do that, uh, we're, we're going to get something that, that looks like this, right? It, it's kind of two, two mounds uh, with, with no space, really, a, a valley right there in between them. So uh, we could try to do this uh, using the washer method. I think that would be really kind of difficult. Uh, so instead, uh, we're going to approach this using, as I say here in the title, uh, the method of cylindrical shells. So I've got the formula uh, for uh, cylindrical shells here. Uh, volume is equal to 2 pi integral from A to B, x minus L times f of x dx. Now remember that L, that comes from the axis of rotation. Right? So since we're revolving around x equals 1, L is going to be 1. If I substitute that into the formula, uh, we get this thing. 2 pi integral A to B, x minus 1 times f of x dx. So the next thing we, we need uh, are those, inter those integration bounds, a and b. And those are just the x-intercepts of our function. So if I take the negative x squared plus 4x minus 3, set that equal to 0, uh, simple little quadratic equation. I, I started by multiplying through by negative 1. For some reason, factoring is a lot easier for me uh, if that leading coefficient is positive. So that gave uh, turn, made the equation x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals 0. And yeah, okay, I can see how that factors. That's x minus 1 times x minus 3. And that gives us two x-intercepts, x equals 1 and x equals 3. So if I put those in for a and b, and I put negative x squared plus 4x minus 3 in for f of x, the integral turns into this thing. And ultimately, this is just the integral of a polynomial. Right, from, from here, it's just kind of grinding away at it. Uh, if we multiply that out, it becomes uh, negative x cubed plus 5x squared minus 7x plus 3. And we can do this using the power rule, right, four times, once for each term. And this turns into volume equals 2 pi, negative x to the fourth over 4 plus 5x cubed over 3 minus 7x squared over 2 plus 3x. And we're going to evaluate that from 1 to 3. So I'm seriously out of room at this point because all those fractions, it's going to be a little long. So if I substitute in 3, uh, I get the expression in the first parentheses. And we're going to subtract from that the expression that I get from substituting in 1. That's the second expression here. And, and, and now it's just doing some, it's not even an algebra problem, now it's just an arithmetic problem. Uh, those expressions simplify to this. Then if we do uh, common denominators on each of the two terms, uh, it's finally starting to simplify a little. Uh, and if we combine these two together, I, I multiply through by the two first, because that's going to make the denominator smaller. Uh, then I found a common denominator, and we ended up with this for our final result, 8 pi over 3 uh, cubic units. So I've got a couple of links here. Uh, one takes you to the lecture on this whole method of cylindrical shells, if you'd like to see where that formula comes from. And the other one takes you to the next lecture in the series where we're going to talk about uh, the formula for finding the arc length of a function.